Hello everyone, and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I hope to launch our new station into orbit. Uh, this is the one for the improved space station contract, and uh, it wants three crew, uh, not three crew inside initially, but eventually, and it wants to have a science lab, and those are heavy, and that's what we've got here. We have to unlock it, it's 100,000, and it's 12.5 tons. So we've got that. We could make this easy and try to dock it to our existing station, but initially I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to have this be independent. So we have the science lab, the hitchhiker storage container, or what used to be the hitchhiker storage container, and solar panels, and everything else is the same as our previous station, really. Uh, the docking port arrangement, everything else is the same, except we've slapped the science lab on, and we've increased the size of the solar panels. So, well, that's that. <laughs> we are going to pack it up on our largest launcher. Well, uh, slight variation on our largest launcher. The Arcturus launcher normally has a Hydrolox upper stage for transfers. Of course, in this case, we don't need that. So we are just low Earth orbit version with it. And the payload is fairly heavy. Let's see, 30 tons. So probably not the capacity of the launcher, but it's heavy. And we are going to build that on our largest pad, which still leaves our other pad free for the space plane. So we're going to try to build a space plane again, just tilting the engine, the Vulcan engine, a little bit differently in order to try and mitigate the balance issues that we had so that the space plane can re-enter a little bit softer this time. Maybe that'll save the crew cabin that I had promised before, maybe not. But anyway, uh, this is station two and we are going to build one and we have to unlock for a hundred thousand unlock credit and we've got one building and hopefully we didn't have anything to tool right oh we have the fairings to tool okay well that, that's not too much extra i'll just make sure to get those tooled for next time okay so yeah i mean you know the launch could fail and we have to build another one i don't know but eventually we'll probably want fairings like these Anyway, that shouldn't be too much extra time, but we need to send people over there. And that means fewer people for this pad. So for this engine, we could shift it physically towards the space plane, or we can tilt it. I think I'm going to go with a tilt. Maybe a tilt and a shift. Still tough to say how that will work out for us. What we can do is make sure that the top hydrolox tank, uh, hydrogen tank drains last. Oh, I think I wanted to put RZ-20s as verniers on the main stage. It's in unconventional. Yes, deeply unconventional. And their fuel mixture is probably different than what we have for the Volcane. Well, we'll deal with that later. And that's just to help with steering. I don't know. We're trying everything here. I'd like to launch the station first, so we're going to divide our staff such that that's the case. And we're not going to flight test it again. Still a long build. Uh, we'll have to wait until June to be done with it and July for the Neko, unless we want to hire more people. Could have enough funds for that, we'll see, but I'm not going to rush into that. We have plenty of time for the contracts, after all. First docking by a space plane is all we've got left here. Now this docking by a space plane just requires horizontal landing. It doesn't actually require a crew. So, if with this test, we can get the space plane up to the station. It can do this because this doesn't have a crew requirement. Yeah, I think we might try that. But first we have to get the station there. All right, I guess we'll time warp through the whole business. Okay, well, it's an expensive deal. We are going to try to launch the station. Rollout even takes a while. We're not accumulating funds that quickly, though, so let's be cautious. 
Lots of electric charge. Hopefully everything will be all right. Okay, throttle is up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Up it goes. Oh right, our terrain is sort of off to the side here. <laughs> I had the camera on the wrong side for our Kuru terrain. I eagerly await the next time test flight decides to kill one of my engines. I'm sure it'll be a very choice moment. Oh, they just did it! They killed one of the engines. One of the Vikings on the boosters. Okay, G-force mitigation. Okay, booster set. Hey. The one that's heavier because it lost an engine early did not get flung out as much. This is why we need good separatrons, just in case we end up with a heavy booster. So this has to be greater than 400 kilometers with its perigee, and then between 400 and 500. So it's higher than our previous station. Bearings. Okay, and we'll boost up to the 400 and shut down. Well, that's a little bit high, but good enough. All right, well, separate. Well, we should have left that suborbital, but. Oh no, the avionics isn't good enough. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> hmm. It's a problem, I think I just made it worse, but maybe I can finagle something here. Does it require us to maintain control over it? No, it just requires us to reach the perigee. I'm gonna wait until I happen to be the right way around. <laughs> but we still won't have enough control, because even with all of its fuel gone, this is still going to be more than that. I forgot to change the controller. But for now, we'll try to fill this part in the haphazard way. Okay, that's barely within spec here. It is happy. Put your improved station in orbit. <laughs> well, it's in orbit. Um, it's going to be tough to dock with this if it's continually rotating like this. This is a pretty high rotational rate. Uh, so we've got problems. We've got problems. Do we have the claw? Is the claw a thing in RP1? This is this could benefit from a claw. Well, I don't have the claw unless it looks substantially different than it usually does, and I sure don't see it around, so I don't know. I'm I'm gonna take a look at that tumbling rate and see if we can do something about that, but seems difficult. I should have put a little reaction wheel on in retrospect. Um, just in case maybe we should have a different station, but let's read that as the station now. I wonder how complicated that's going to be. It's still rotating. <laughs> still rotating. Gosh darn it, I forgot all about the avionics unit. We're still carrying the one with, uh, that was for the station without that, that's all. Well, we could have a spacecraft sort of knock into it a little bit to try and stabilize it. But, yeah. Well, anyway, I'll see what I can cook up. Okay, so this is a long shot, but we might as well try, considering how much the station costs. And what we have here is a big controller, uh, capable of 46 tons. It's got a lot of power, actually, but I put solar panels anyway. And we've got really big RCS thrusters, so that it can make the maneuvers very convincingly. And then, of course, uh, propellant-only docking port on either side. So we're going to dock to that side. Because I think it would take less effort to dock to propellant only docking port compared to the Apollo docking port, I'm not sure. So hopefully it'll be an easier dock. Uh, it's, it's not entirely clear to me. We also have thrusters and we have a lot of delta V. That's what the 3400 is, what we have in here. So uh, on the bright side we'll be, you know, adding fuel to the station and our visiting craft can refuel using this fuel as well. I'm sure we won't need all of that for our purposes, but we might as well have 
all of that because our minimal launcher, you know, there's 150 tons on a minimum 150 ton pad uh, can do the trick with this payload. In fact, it has too much delta V even now. So yeah, we're using the Arcturus VL and we are going to build one of these and send some up. Oh, we need, uh, gosh darn it, propellant GSE. Okay, fine. Uh, great. Renovate costs 109. It'll probably be quick. Anyway, once that's done, uh, we'll build this and then we are going to try to rescue the station. Okay, we have our rescue rocket on the pad. I think I'm just going to go now and try to correct our inclination on the fly. So we'll head a little bit further south initially. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. Oh, and they disintegrated. Okay, fairing set. Before our thrust to weight ratio gets too high. Okay, well that's getting way too high. Let's just separate and use the payload. Well, that's a good encounter over there. This isn't exactly a Skylab rescue situation, but I'd like it to have sort of the same flavor. Okay, we have a lot of burning to do here. As we are only now making orbit as well as matching speeds with the target. Oh, we started this burn too late. Doesn't seem to be tumbling too bad right now. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that we are controlling from the docking, the propellant only docking port. Ah, uh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> Are we gonna have to bump it? We're going to have to bump it. Mm. <laughs> I should have control from this one. Okay, now I'm gonna give parallel. Uh, close. Stop rotating. <laughs> My attempts to bump into it to stop it rotating have not been super successful. Hmm. Well, maybe I should just go at it on, the, on its side. I really don't want to hit the solar panels, though. I think... Can I kill rotation here and have it kill rotation, too? <laughs> Uh, okay, that solar panel's getting... Yeah, that's too close. Oh gosh. Mm. Oh no, I broke a solar panel. <sighs> One of the station solar panels, I mean. The station can operate with just one solar panel. Uh, I think I might have broken both. <laughs> I didn't notice breaking the other one. I mean, a roll axis rotation would be fine, but no, it had to be like this pitch and yaw thing. Just want to ram it. I <laughs> just want to ram it. Oh, I can't even ram it. Stop. <laughs> Maybe it's just a roll rotation now. I think I managed to stop it finally. But it's lost all of its solar panels. <laughs> and now it's got a roll rotation, but uh, that might be manageable. I should have just done it in daylight in the first place. All the solar panels are gone. I mean, it's still rolling. 
all over the place. But I think... Okay, I think we have docked to it. Yeah, I could have done it better if it was just in daylight. I should have just uh, boinked it properly. Proper boinking. Okay, well it's killing rotation now. I should have just retracted the solar panels on it before attempting to dock. Why didn't I think of that? I tell you. Okay, so we need solar panels. Okay, so even though this rocket is way overpowered for this tiny little solar truss, we're launching this tiny little solar truss on it, and it's got docking ports at both ends. It's basically the same thing as we had before, except smaller controller, because this is one that we have tooled. It's a three-ton controller, that should be fine. And we have the same solar panels that the station was supposed to have in the first place. Um, I don't know if we could send a Kerbal up to repair, repair it, but, you know, that's a whole tricky business when it comes to Kerbals. And we've got at 150 tons, that by increasing the size of the balloon tanks to something we were, I mean, we had already tooled a range of balloon tanks, so, yep. But we have way too much Delta V, and what can I say? So, uh, I've tr I tried other arrangements, like with the Deneb, and... They just cost more anyway, so this is the most affordable, quickest to build option. Hopefully without crew, the power on the station will hold out for a while. But maybe we should consider this an emergency thing. We, we shouldn't be building anything else, right? Yeah, everything else is done. But we can't put too many people on pad 4. Actually, we're at the max. Well. We'll just rush, I suppose. Rush job. Still takes a month. Somehow we lost the avionics unit on this. Gosh. Maybe that's why I was so quick to integrate. <laughs> um. Alright, well, station 2 is like right in front of us. We It is dark, but we should get going. We've got the controller on now. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. Guess we'll catch up to it. Oh, we lost one booster. Oh, gosh. Ah. Oh. When was the symmetric cutoff going to help us? <laughs> if one booster goes, shouldn't the other booster shut off? Uh Shouldn't it? I mean, shouldn't the symmetric cutoff have worked there? I knew test light would get me. Alright, back to Space Center. We'll, we'll get another one. Okay, looks like it's time to launch and yeah, it's night time again. SAS on, throttle is up, let the boosters work this time, and the core. Ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. Yes, now you can explode. Okay, fairings. Always tight. Okay, finishing up orbit with our surplus of, well, basically everything. Thrust and delta V. Uh, oh, okay, okay. It's probably too much. Technically, this is still suborbital. Uh, Alright. And separation. Okay, yeah, I think we'll be able to catch up with the battery without extending the solar panels. I don't know whether the station still has power or not. We didn't have a rocket, have a mishap and everything. So we didn't get here very quickly. Uh, 
Okay, there it is again. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should have it the other way around. Uh, or maybe I should just ignore that aspect of things. Just the way our thrusters are pointed. It's not ideal. But maybe that's not important right now. I mean, the one kilonewton thruster is not the RCS. These are pointed at the station right now. But you know, I've had enough of this. <laughs> All right, we have connected. It indeed had no electric charge, really. Cannot deploy while stowed. Really? It doesn't want to extend the solar panels. I'm going to go to the tracking station and come back, but I better deploy those solar panels. Okay, please, let me deploy the solar panels now. Whew. Okay. All right, solar panels are extended and we are recharging. Okay, so yes, we have our station after many mishaps, and we will try to send our space plane up to it, the Neko, and we will try that in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.